Hey guys, what is going on? This is TravisP11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. And if you are a fan of the channel, you know that about a month or so ago, we debuted this uh, Ruger American, just standard rifle, chambered in 308. Took it out to the range, played around with it a little bit, decided that I'm going to make this my new deer gun from here on out. Uh, issue I'm running into, first of all, 308's a caliber I don't have a lot of because I'm fairly new to this caliber. I've got tons of 223, 5.56, 7.62 by 39, 9mm, and so on. But when it comes to 308, Finding good ammunition, or trying to find hunting grade ammunition, I guess you could say, uh, at the prices that a person would have paid, say, a year or two ago, is pretty much about impossible right now. So, the other option that I had would be to reload it. The only thing is, is that I've only practiced reloading handgun ammunition, and I wasn't quite ready to just step into learning how to reload rifle ammunition just yet. But luckily, I got a buddy who goes by the name of Foos, who lives about three hours away, who invited me out to his place, out to his range, where we were going to develop a round that we could use with this rifle. Now, the goal that we had here would be to develop two different types of round. Um, one of them would be a full metal jacket, relatively inexpensive range round, a plinker, something I could practice with, but then also develop a hunting round and a plinking round that would pattern about the same and feel about the same at 100 yards, uh, preferably having the same powder charge. So the idea is that I'd have an inexpensive practice round and then I'd have a more premium grade hunting round I could use when the times to actually go out into the field. Now, the thing about the hunting ammunition is that once you get past 100 yards, you've got way different ballistics than you do with the practice ammunition, but out of the barrel, the 100 yard performance between what I'm gonna show you with my targets was just about spot on. So I got a crash course in how to reload rifle ammunition. I learned about the different dies, the different tools that we would use. Foos has got an absolutely fantastic setup for reloading ammunition. I wanted to learn from somebody that had a lot of experience. And we went ahead and loaded up five different loads. We looked up the manual. I used Accurate 2015 powder. Uh, we used a 150 grain Hornady full metal jacket boat tail, boat tail, just regular bullet, right? We loaded four different rounds. I'm sorry, we loaded four rounds with uh, five different charges of powder, starting at 38 grains, 39, 40, 41, 42. We were keeping these within the limits of the load so that we wouldn't exceed the, the charge for the round. So I took my four shots at 100 yards, and we wanted to see which one had the tightest, best group. And, uh, you know, we're kind of looking, okay, there's 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. We measured out the groups and so on. And I really, it was amazing the difference in the fell recoil between 38 grains of powder and 42 grains of powder. 38 was quite pleasant to shoot. In fact, it felt like 762 by 39, whereas 42 grains was a little more erratic, was a little bit more jumpy, definitely had a lot more kick to it, and it shows in the patterning that it pulled off at 41 and 42 grains, okay? Now, when we look over at the hunting rounds that we were developing, which was a 178 grain uh, Hornady AMAX bullet, which is a, a ballistic tip bullet, loaded with the 2015 accurate powder, we're able to use the exact same powder. We loaded 37, 38, and 39 grains of powder. And after I took the four shots, we compared the two targets together, and we determined that the 38 grain charges, which is right here and right here, patterned almost identical and basically produced the exact same spread. They also produce a pretty decent amount of velocity and energy with the AMAX producing enough uh, energy that I would need to safely harvest and humanely harvest a deer at 200, 250 yards and so on. Now, you get a lot of drop after 100 yards, but again, I've got a round that's now basically identical. Now, granted, it helped to have a little bit of experience reloading ammunition, just dealing with the hollow point ammunition 9mm that I've been doing myself, but to produce what I needed in the end was an awesome experience, and it was cool to be able to work with Foos in this whole process, and just to learn about the difference in ballistics and the powder charges and so on, and when I was done, I was able to produce rounds that run 30, 40 cents a round, or maybe even less. So I actually saved money when it was all said and done for the number of rounds that I bought versus going out buying a bunch of boxes of ammunition. Now here's the thing, getting into reloading right now, it's a very expensive thing to do. It's almost impossible to find a lot of the primers that you need. And I'm saying this in uh, June of 2021. And when you watch this video a year from now, you might be like, well man, there's primers all over the place. There's bullets all over the place. Well. For a while there, powders completely disappeared, primers totally disappeared, and we're just now starting to see those things showing up. So if you got access to reloading equipment, or if you know somebody who knows how to reload, approach them and ask them if they can teach you how to reload, especially if you wanna get into the whole process. You're gonna find that reloaders are great people. Now, with everything that I just told you with how we developed this round, and if you're a seasoned reloader, you might have a completely different approach to this. You might take four or five different bullets out to the range, four or five different powder charges. 
uh, try a whole bunch of different rounds. There was even a guy that was out there that had his powder drop with him in his press, and he was fine-tuning his rounds to get them as accurate as possible. Yeah, right. um, and so, so anyway, get to know a reloader and uh, take some time, learn about the craft, and you can develop some really good rounds for your rifle. So in the end, I've got something that produces about three-quarters of an inch of a group at 100 yards. Granted, the ballistics are different between the planking round and the hunching round once you get past 100 yards. But I feel like I learned something new. I'm definitely going to get into reloading 308. When I'm done, I'll have casings that can reload, which is going to save me more money. I've got plenty of bullets, and then once I get myself some rifle primers, I'm going to be all set to go. So, this is Travis P11. I want to thank you guys for watching. And again, check out my videos on the Ruger American 308 rifle. It's a so anyway, guys, make sure you like and subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can follow me over on GunStreamer, YouTube, GunTube.org, pretty much all over the place. Um, We've also got a little podcast that we do Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. Central Time called The Caliber Corner. Make sure you do check it out. It's a great little time to get together and talk about guns and ammo. We cover all kinds of different topics. And uh, I think that's about it. So have fun, be safe, guys. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.